I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready to release your faith? I told you at the beginning of the week, hey, everything you need to get out of debt, everything you need for every bill to be paid, it's coming to you now. And that's what we're releasing our faith for. That you're not going to cross into the new year. Now, now when God opens the door, don't start trying to be wise in your own mind. Go pay everything you owe. Pay it. Pay it. Now, it's God that I've supplied. Because sometimes, you know, you know, it, it, these things happen sometimes. You, you, maybe you're owing a hundred thousand. And... God now supplies maybe 120,000. And then you now start thinking, hmm, if I pay this debt of 100,000, I'll only have 20,000 left. Hmm. What can I do with 20,000? You know what? Let me pay 50 so that I'll now have 70 left. Come on. He who has supplied today, he can supply another before the day ends. Oh, he can't. But then he is looking at your faithfulness in appropriation. He's looking at you. He supplies everything you receive right now is for you to make sure you clear everything you owe. Now, so when it begins to come, have the right attitude and watch God open doors for you. Now, having this in mind, can we call for that daily bread? So I had to share that with you so that you know what you're releasing your faith for. We are releasing our faith that you owe no man anything by the 31st of this year. You will walk into the next year free man. Praise God. And it doesn't matter how much you owe. A miracle to meet that need is coming your way. So join me right now. Say, Father, I demand right now and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus name. Amen. Now angels are working on your behalf, bringing to pass this request that you have made in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Now, last week we I began to share some things about our nation and how God wants us to dwell in peace. Now, I'm not going to end this year without touching on those things and the need for us to pray. Listen, it's important. We are trusting the Lord for peace in our nation. We're trusting the Lord for good governance. We're trusting the Lord for prosperity for everyone in our nation. And if you don't know what God has said already, you will not know what to do. But God has promised that we will see peace. Oh, God has promised. Listen, next year's election, you will be happy with what God will do. Trust me. Forget about what you're seeing today. Don't put your attention on anything you're seeing today. Just wait and see what the Lord is going to do. Now, but that waiting doesn't mean you should wait in laziness. You know, like they say, get your PVC. Yes, but I haven't gotten your PVC now because that, that's ended already according to the time timetable. Now, if you haven't collected it, look for a way to get it. And sometimes, let's even share some wisdom with the authorities on how to make things easy. Because, you know, I was talking to my wife and someone else a few days ago. I said, why don't they post it to people? So why don't they even create on their platform um, an option that you can receive it by mail, you know? And you pay an extra maybe 500 or 1,000 there and they will send it to your house. He said, well, what about security? There are banks that send their ATM cards to the owners. They do that. So you fill the option and put in the right address and maybe put in when you want it to be delivered. 
and they will get it delivered to you. You sign off the delivery. So if there's anything, you can make claims. Why do they let people gather at their office in like one marketplace? I passed there one day and I said, Lord, what's going on here? Praise God. Yeah, let's make things easy for people. Things can be easy. Praise God. So, but then, having done that, you've got to pray. 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 Why do we pray? We're not praying for God to do a miracle in on. So, no, you're praying for God to do a miracle in your heart. Because see, if you don't see what God is doing, there is no way you're going to function right. But when you pray, taking time to pray for your nation, God will begin to minister to your heart the things that he has planned. Now, from the things he has planned, even your mind will begin to walk in a particular direction. You will begin, if you are an investor, you will begin to know from your heart the kind of things you should go into. You will begin to know the kind of the candidate to even support. You will begin to know when you pray. But the problem is many people are not praying. Many people are busy asking when. You see, it's just like when we say Jesus is coming soon. Now, you know, we've been hearing that before we were born. Praise God. We, we were born to hear that Jesus is coming soon. And then there are times where you will hear messages and it look like, man, he might just come this week. And then everybody behaves themselves. And then, you know what I'm talking about? You know, I'll just be holy. Ah, every bad thing I'll be doing. I'll not, ah, no, 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 no. Jesus might just come any moment from now. And then you wait long. One week, two weeks, one month, one year. Ha. Ah. Hmm. Then, guess what? You start going back into all those things you used to do before. Then, you ask yourself. Now, some people are even coming and say, is he really going to come? Because we've been hearing this thing for so long. I'll tell you one truth. The coming of Jesus is not dependent on God. The coming of Jesus is dependent on on how prepared we are for him. Because he's not coming to whisk us away. That's what people think. No. He's coming to reign with us. An example in scriptures. God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. The journey between Egypt to the promised land that God promised them on foot is 40 days 40 days so from the day they were leaving Egypt you can tell the maximum maybe they will rest whatever maximum you can estimate by so so time they should get into Egypt but then it took 40 years for them to step foot into that promised land 40 years of journeying why? For a 40 days journey. Remember, Moses was there. And Moses was on the mountain. And God said, when you bring them, you will bring them to worship me on this mountain. Moses knew the way to that mountain. And the Bible didn't say when he was coming from that mountain, he had to cross the Red Sea. But the moment they came out of Egypt, God said, hey, Moses, I'm sending an angel to lead you. Follow the angel. So they began to follow the angel and the angel took them to the Red Sea. Parted the Red Sea. The, the angel started taking them through a new, new route. And eventually they spent 40 years. It's not because God wanted them to spend 40 years. Now think about it. Any prophet that would have prophesied the day they were leaving Egypt to say when they would enter the promised land would have turned out false. Why? Because with hindsight, you can tell. See that now? But then, why did they spend that long? Because of their hearts. The Bible says because of their unbelief. So every time God wants to get them in, he checks their hearts. These people are not ready. Why? What was God looking for? There is a condition of their heart that will yield to his plans when they enter that city. If that heart condition is not there, they will enter that city 
and mess up everything that God wants them to do. Because God is not intended. God, give me a new job. Oh, God, give me. God, if you just give me a new job, I will praise you for the rest of my life. But then there are certain things about you that will become a destruction to your life if you get that job. And now God is working on you to get that thing out of you. So he gives you that job. You don't mind. You don't concern. All you're concerned about, give me, give me, give me, just give me. Oh God, if you give me, a, when you see my titan, you will, you know, even you, you'll be grateful to me. That's what people tell, tell the Lord. Hey, pause. Now, sometimes you know that something is ripe, but you can't find a way of getting it. Most times, it's your heart condition that is delaying it. I told you a few days ago, to do God's word is not hard. What is hard is the condition of people's hearts. If you will walk on your heart and just simply, you know, the truth is we always know the right thing to do. We know, you know, when you sit down, I know, I know, I know now, I know now. Then get up and do it. It's just that, uh, see, uh, all these temptations, they are too great. No, you have the ability to say no. You do. You do. Some of you, you know, you, you just in your heart, this little pilfering here and there, little pilfering here and there. And God is looking at you. If I give you access to billions, not your money now, I put you in that as what, what are you going to do? He says, no, no, I, I will know now, I will know now. No, you will not know. If you don't do it today, how will you keep yourself tomorrow? So God is looking at you. Someone goes, oh, can you keep this money for me? You spend it. Ah, God said, no, 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 no. He's not ready. Keep him here a while. And he tests you again. Somebody says, hey, come, let's do this business. And then you do the business again and the prophet has come to you and bring me. Ah, let me lie to him that is, that's not all that they paid. Let me tell him that they paid. Ah, God said, nah, you're not ready. Now God could have gotten you into the place from day one. But you see the destruction you're going to bring on your life. The disgrace you're going to bring on your life is what he's looking at. And he says, no, keep him here for a while. That's what happened to the children of Israel. That's the same thing that's happening to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone who tells you Jesus is going to come on so, so, and so days lying to you. They don't know. Jesus himself said, no man knows the time. He says, no man knows the hour. Why? Because it's not dependent on God. It's dependent on how we are willing to adjust our lives and align ourselves to God's will and to his purpose. Now, here's the truth. So if we continue like this, is it that Jesus will never come? Here's the truth. The children of Israel, they left Egypt in multitude. But at the end of the day, only two of the people that came out of Egypt entered the promised land. Only two. Now, those were the only two that believed God. Those were the only two that aligned their faith, aligned their mindset with the reality of God. And God kept them alive to enter the promised land. Every other person that entered the promised land with them were born in the wilderness. None came out from Egypt. So none experienced Egypt. So God felt... Because that whole experience of Egypt will affect their administration in the promised land. So God felt, okay, now that everyone have died that came out of Egypt, all that Egyptian experience is gone. But you know, they must have told their children stories and stories. So there's still a little problem. And then God got these remaining ones into the promised land. So don't sit down and say, ah, but everybody's doing the wrong things now. So maybe this is Jesus coming to know you don't know there is a remnant that are aligning themselves with the Lord and God is bringing to pass what he has said what he has promised so if that if that remnant aligns themselves properly he will surely come praise God my time is up today but I shared this with you to admonish you more than ever before to pray for Nigeria personally pray now we've set up a prayer system if you want to join see the website on the screen 
go on that website read everything if you have any questions call our number and we'll explain to you you can join our, our, our prayer network and let's pray thank you lord jesus i'll see you tomorrow god bless you bye bye